In this video, you're going to learn how to grow your Facebook page with Facebook Insights. So to access Facebook Insights, you want to click on the Insights tab at the top of your Facebook page once you're logged in. And the first report that you're going to see here is the overview report. And this will give you an overview of some of the key metrics uh, from your Facebook page over the last seven days by default. Now, if you do want to change the time frame, you can select today, yesterday, the last seven days, or the last 28 days. And you can see then all of those metrics really on the last 28 day basis. If you want to go beyond 28 days, you also have the option there to export the data. And you can export up to 180 days at a time. So you can select maybe this quarter or this month, uh, set the dates and then export the data if you do want to get that longer term view. Now, while this overview report is great to get a snapshot of your performance of your Facebook page, to get the insights for how to grow, we really want to come into the individual reports in the sidebar here. So let's come into some of these individual reports to see how we can grow our Facebook page. Well, first thing we want to know is, okay, how, are, how is our growth rate and how are we doing? Here we can see a graph up at the top in terms of our page followers up and down uh, over the last, we can change this to month, a quarter or week. And um, one thing to note here is, or one thing you might be wondering is, what's the difference between followers and likes and why is there two different charts for this? Well, this is a little bit confusing when you see it for the first time. But if I come to a Facebook page here, I can show you this example. If I like a Facebook page, you can see that I automatically follow the Facebook page as well, which means that I will see their content in my news feed. And I'll get notifications uh, of events and suggested live videos, etc. However, I can unfollow a page and still like a page, which means I won't be seeing their content in my news feed. So why would Facebook even set this up? It seems a bit confusing. I think the key idea is that you could follow a page, but not necessarily like the page. So it kind of gives that, that, that allows you to have that privacy if you want. So people don't know what pages that you like. Um, and it's a little bit confusing, but I think it's for privacy reasons, etc. I think in terms of, of a business, you shouldn't really be too worried about this. The number you should want to be focusing on is actually the followers because the followers have opted in to see your content in their news feed. And if we look at the numbers here, I actually have more followers, 23,000, than page likes. So more people have opted to see my content in their news feed than actually uh, wanting to publicly share that they've liked the page. So it's only about a 3% difference um, for me here. So it's not huge and nothing to worry about. But it is a little bit confusing when you see it for the first time. And that's why I just wanted to explain it to you. Bottom line, focus on the followers and uh, really just uh, worry about that. Now in the followers report here, you can see net followers because you probably will have some unfollows and they are shown these um, red graphs here. So I can see sometimes about three, five unfollows per day. And if we actually look at this benchmarking tool here, I can see that on average per day, getting about three unfollows. And uh, that's the same as the last period. If we look at organic followers, this period I'm getting about 51 a day, last period about 79, so a little bit down. Uh, paid followers none, because I haven't had promotions in the last couple of periods. And then net followers in general, we can see 47 per day, and then uh, 75 per day in the last period. So last period was definitely a bigger one for me. I was putting out more content, and that's why I was getting better results there. So that's that's a handy little tool just to check how you're doing compared to the, the last period. Now down here we have where your page follows happened, and you can see really on the page is gonna be the vast majority of them here, or you may be seeing the option of it hasn't been categorized, but they're not sure where that's coming from. So this report can sometimes be helpful, 
but not always so helpful. Okay, now moving on down to the REACH report. This is really where it starts to get interesting and we can see how many people are actually seeing our posts uh, on a daily basis. So this will depend when you post. You can see it really spikes when I've posted out here. And then the days I, I don't post, obviously there's not a lot of people going to see my content. So that's why it's important to regularly put out content if you want to get people to see your posts. Now coming down, we can see reactions, comments, shares, and once again, we can see those average on a daily basis, and they'll probably pretty closely coincide with the posts up there. Now reactions, okay, we've got some unlikes, um, but really the key thing to notice there is your traffic is gonna spike once you put out posts. Now let's come down to the actual actions on page. Now this is pretty interesting because actions on page are gonna be when people click on this button here, or say if you've got a phone number as a local business that they click through there, or even click through to your website link. So you can see website clicks, phone number clicks, action button clicks, get directions clicks. These are the total actions on page and it'll depend on your type of business, what you really want. So I can see who clicked the action button, which is the key thing that I want them to do on my page. And uh, obviously there's no directions because it's an online business, uh, no phone numbers. So it is good to come in here and see how effective that button underneath your cover image is and how many people are actually clicking on it. And you'll see that in the actions on page report. Coming down to the posts report. This is probably one of the most interesting places to spend a bit of time. And a key thing to look at is when are your fans online? And you can see here that in this graph, there's definitely a peak on Friday. Uh, Thursday, Friday, biggest days. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, less so. And um, although it is pretty consistent at about four o'clock on Thursdays and Fridays would be a very good time for me to maybe start a competition or something like that when the maximum amount of people is. And then for the other days of the week, really around four o'clock is when most of my audience are online. So that's really a good indicator of when I should be setting my posting schedule. Now coming down in terms of uh, the post types, we can have a look at them here. This really shows us all the, the reach for each post, the engagement on each post, and a quick summary of what the posts look like. So even scanning down here, I can see that if I click into this, that could I create more posts like this that got a, a larger reach and engagement. And so what you should really be doing is having a look at these posts that had a much bigger than normal reach and engagement. So I can see the reach, the bigger the graph is, the bar here is, and bigger here. You can, you really wanna be making more posts like this. So here I actually shared a resource, a list of FAQs that was helpful to people. And I just said, you know, thumbs up if you like, and even feel free to tag friends, which I think some people do, did they share it? So this was a good post because it was a helpful resource and people wanted to share it with their friends then. So. It's always good to remind people to actually like a post or tag their friends, and that'll help you get increased engagement. So looking down a little bit more, uh, again, just have a look at those top posts that you've made. Uh, again, I said, feel free to tag friends and thumbs up if you like. You can see there's been six shares. And so that's how you get more people to really see your posts by giving little instructions like that and sharing helpful things uh, with them. So the key thing to do on this post page here is to come in, have a look at the time that you should really be posting and the days, and then have a look in, at those posts that have been uh, most successful for you, and even copy that format for future posts in the future. Now coming down, uh, let us have a look at there are some other reports here like events. Now, I haven't set any up, um, but if you're a local business, that's something and a report you wanna be looking at closely. 
Also, if you're putting a lot of videos on your Facebook page, there's a separate report where you're showing the number of minutes watched. I don't have a lot on this page, but you can see that they showed the minute views over the last time frame, the 28 days, whatever it is, the time frame that you set, last seven days. And um, down here is where it gets really interesting as well, the people's report. So this will show you really the demographics of your audience. And this is the interesting thing. You can see it, the, the, the demographics um, by your fans and your followers. And we explain the difference between that. But you can see that's almost identical. That really uh, there's a strong skew towards males of 25 to 34 in both the fans and followers, about 25%. If we come to people reached again, 25% men in that age bracket. And even the people who engaged are actually even more so 26% male males of that age range. So this is an interesting distinction between not only who your fans or followers are, but really who are the people who engage with your post. So what you want to be doing is really keeping this demographic in mind. What are going to be the pain points? the problems that a person, a man of 25 to 34 for your, for say a digital marketing, what are going to be the type of problems that they have? And then to create more content around that, speak to them directly in your examples that you're using, try and create an example for a guy of that age and really tailor your content towards them so they can see themselves in your example and the problems that you're pointing out and that's just going to make them even more engaged. Now down here as well you can even see the country and the city and the language. So again you want to be serving your content and creating content that really relates to your most engaged uh, people. So the US or maybe even in a city in India in English of that age, age range and it's just very helpful to come in here and use this information to build out an avatar or a buyer persona for your fans and for your ideal customers. So the people's report extremely helpful. Definitely come in here and check that out. Now below that we have messages. If you've enabled messages on your Facebook page, you're going to see the total conversations here. I've disabled them. And uh, again, if you set up like a Facebook store, you're going to see the number of orders here as well. But the key reports I think everybody's going to want to look at is especially the people report. So you can understand the demographics of your most engaged people, your post types. So you can really understand when your fans are online and the days of the week to post and the type of content to post. And also then just keep in mind, you know, how you're doing in terms of your followers, because the more followers you have, the more people are going to see your content which means you're going to be increasing and reaching more people on Facebook and making them aware of your business and getting them to come back to your website. So come into your Facebook insights now that you know how to analyze these reports and get some insights out of them and check out these reports for yourself.